Hi, this is a guide for Leon B. This is a hardcore S plus rank guide. So if you're trying to get the infinite mini launcher, this guide will show you all the pulls that you will encounter, how best to deal with them, how to turn most of the situations in your favor. Um, right off the bat, I wanted to mention my philosophy. Since there's only three saves, my philosophy is to use whatever you can to put the odds in your favor. So. I noticed it was easy to put the odds in my favor after you put the fire out for the helicopter by using a certain path and a certain technique. Basically, you want to save all your flashbangs and your frag grenades because you don't really need them. And uh, later it just makes things easier. Now Leon's lucky that he doesn't need the frag grenades for any bosses. You can use the three you get in Umbrella for G3, but along the way he's free to use his grenades and even some flash rounds, or flash bangs, because I feel like he has a harder environment where Claire has it easier, except she has harder bosses, quote unquote, and Leon I feel like has it easier on the bosses because of the flamethrower and because of a couple of other things. Basically the fact that you can knife down Super Tyrant. So, um... Just wanted to get back to the game. If you notice, there's a red herb and a blue herb on the left and the right, respectively. When you run and you pick up the cutting tool, the helicopter will crash. I recommend trying to dodge these guys. If you if you copy exactly how I did it, if you run as fast as I did to that little shack to the where you get the key for this gate, those zombies seem to be in that same place all the time. Now, out of habit, I was using the frag grenade, but I would only hit like one or two, and it was avoidable anyway. So I started just pocketing the frag grenade and dodging them. So that's my recommendation to you. There's a way to get it so that they consistently spawn that way, and you can just weave between them. So our approach is to go and get the shotgun right off the bat. So we're going to go to the second floor and grab the weapons key card. I also grabbed boards just to make it really easy. Again, back to what I how I mentioned about odds, stacking the odds in your favor. Using the boards, I'll show you where. It helps. Wow, that was really nice. Uh, it helps um, you later on when Mr. X is pursuing you. So I also wanted to recommend, I know in one guide I've seen, he says to do headshots for stagger. The issue with that... It, in one of the clips, he shoots a zombie like seven or eight times in the head. I even think it's Ada, uh, which is a part where you don't want to miss a stagger because she has limited bullets. It's hardcore and she has no heals. Um, plus, it's easy for her to get overwhelmed. So, I recommend shooting below the knee, like the shin. Um, above the knee seems to be thicker or more or stronger or have more health or something below the knee just causes them to buckle usually in two hits so that's my recommendation to you when dealing with zombies now uh, personally I loot everything I can when I have the time and there's a stash nearby because um, I want to make sure I have the resources later since this isn't a speed run um, I you know you have a two hour limit and I know I can do this in an hour 30 easy, uh, just taking my time, picking stuff up, going to my inventory, this and that. And um, this game ends at about a le uh, an hour and 35 minutes. I think I even, I think I even developed the fifth roll of film because I've never actually developed the film and the scenario, the B scenario. I just. Uh, sat there and I went through all the combinations for the statue instead of developing the film because I didn't I I don't know I just figured it would be easier to do that learn the code and then every time I play I would know the the combination instead of having to like actually get to the point where I needed the thing and it turns out I was right because having to go develop that film would have been a severe pain in the butt so we pick up the valve we pick up the flashbang on the table before that now we're gonna leave here I wanted to mention that because uh, those are two very important things. I also should have mentioned to pick up the fuse from the break room, but I feel like we've learned as a, I don't know, I feel like people can watch what's happening and take notes of what's happening, but also listen to something different here? the speaker's talking about that's semi-related. 
and be able to process both of those like almost easily and naturally. It's really interesting. So here you want to walk. You want to slow walk down this hall. I real what it why did I go back to the door? I think I was going to go and get boards, and then I realized there are no. I think he has boards in that last room where the ammo is on the chair to the left and where the herb was on the right. But I board that up for later because we're going to have to come to this door to get the uh, to get the jack so we can move the bookshelves in the library all the way over. Um, I'm a little paranoid. You could probably run from here, but I slow walk. Just because uh, stacking the stacking the odds, stocking you can stock the odds, right? Stock the odds, stack the odds. Is that the same thing? What is the difference between stacking and stocking? Like if you stock the shelves, aren't you stacking the shelves? It language is funny. Okay, so we pick up the detonator. The cutting tool is now useless. We can ditch that. From here, we're going to go on to the, the office that's to the right. The reason we do that now, and this is the reason we don't get the magnum. Because we save resources and time running here. That guy is not up yet. When we come back, he would be alive, and we'd have to put bullets in his knee, and then get by him, get the, the pouch. You'd actually have to shoot him twice. Uh, on my first ever time doing this on Claire, Claire B., I thought I only put two shots into him. I did make him stagger. I got to the safe, and then when I got out of the safe, he attacked me again. So, yeah, it's not a situation you really want to be in, if that makes sense, especially in hardcore. So that's why we get the, the pouch right then. You can get the magnum. It's not hard. It's actually very manageable for Leon. Because you basically, I don't know, I have a, if you look up my... My casual run with Claire, you'll see the route to go that way if you want to pick up the Magnum. It's the same exact path because, yeah. And it's uh, it's optimized, so you save time. Like, I will leave things, and I plot, it, I plot my inventory the right way. You know, I pick up things in the right order. I get everything, so that way we don't have to come back. Um, for this, on Claire, I recommend shooting them with a flame round. For Leon... Oh, yeah, I was, like, so mad at myself, but I didn't want to waste the flashbang. That's usually my go-to. This is the cool thing about uh, just the game in general is just from playing, you'll be exposed to healing items. So I wanted to make sure both were in there. I don't really know what I'm doing, and I can't believe that uh, this hardcore run makes it. <laughs> Because it was going good, and then I just, like, decided to fuck around. <laughs> but, uh, I, honestly, it's just because I don't know how to do... How to play Leon. I don't, know, like, really know how the shotgun works so well. It's... It's... Alright, it's good. It's good for zombies. It sucks for slickers. For lickers, just dodge them. Don't even bother shooting them with the shotgun. You have to shoot them, like, three times. Maybe two headshots. Um, but they're fast. They are fast. And you have to be smart when you run from them. I don't know. They're probably the most annoying thing versus Leon. Uh, I am also not so great at GE adults. So in here, we're stocking up on shotgun shells. There was a red herb to the right out there. So that's that's what I'm talking about. There's always a healing item nearby. If you ever take damage, you can just grab the stuff on the ground that you don't have space for later. Or, to, you know what I mean? You don't have time to get back to your stash to drop off anyway. So you use it and you're good. There's a lot of shotgun shells on the way here. There's four. There's two in, two of those lockers, one on the bench right there that we passed, and then there's going to be some shells on a desk in here. We get the battery to mix with the detonator, another red herb. So this is where we get stocked with heals. That's why I didn't care that that zombie bit me. I get another first aid kit. Like This is just too much stuff. I'm not going to come back to this office ever again, so I might as well smuggle it out and see what happens. Like, do I use it? Do I not use it? Do I have to discard it? Whatever. Regardless, it served its purpose. I don't think there's ammo here on A. Just letting... I mean, that's not like a huge big, but... Now, traditionally, I would go left, and then you run into Mr. X... And you can flashbang him, and then you can get the uh, the unicorn medallion. But I switched it up. 
and I go this way. So instead of going and getting the spade key first and then going second floor, so it's like one first floor, third floor, second, we just go one, two, three. So that was the second floor. We wrap that up. Now we're going to the third floor. There's going to be a zombie here. And then we're going to grab the spade key right there. And um, in a moment, I'm going to show you the swinging door trick for the library. I mean, you probably have... I don't know. I don't know if you've seen it. I th There doesn't seem to be many videos out there, and there's not many, like... Com like walkthroughs with commentary there's just like a lot of like people playing silently or just telling you how they did it but so we plant the the we detonate uh, we plant the detonator and then we do that we open the door and we make sure it's swinging open as the the bomb detonates so that way the bookshelf does not fall if you do it that way you also save yourself a bunch of time since mr x is pursuing you this is the code for the medallion and uh, now you just want to make sure you have space for them. You have a space for this one because you just use the detonator. But for the next two, I'm going to have to clear some room. Now, what I do is I bait him up here. You could switch to the shotgun and blast this guy in the head. Just to, uh, to make it easier. Um, I actually really recommend that. Because you will have more than enough shotgun shells, and you did not, I did not have to use that flashbang. Like, so you do not have to use one there. You can definitely conserve it and save it. I take the stairs, because I'm going to get the second medallion, the unicorn. She followed me out here. That's really good. Especially if Mr. X comes out here, because he can shove her. But you can also bait the, uh, the... Like, they charge you twice, they'll go like, ah, ah, and then they like, st they have to like, re-catch themselves, like, recuperate. So, oof. Yeah, I was pretty screwed there. There's no I could have threw a flashbang before I even, uh, see that's just too much stuff, too much unnecessary stuff. You don't have to do any of this. Oof, bait the punch. Oh, he still grabs me, but at least I think he throws her. What's gonna happen? Oof. That was some crazy stuff. And I like it, though, because if you... This video... You know, a lot of people do the runs perfectly, and you're like, Oh, I don't know. I can never do it like that. Because it's just, like, so flawless, right? What I like about this is that it's not. And it shows you that, like, so much can be going on. You can be taking all this damage, and you can still get S plus rank if you just keep going and stay focused. Like, if you don't, like... You get discouraged. Once you get discouraged and give up, that's when you'll die or something's going to happen that you don't want. So I avoid... Right. Now we just go. I uh, cap his knees. Put in the medallions. And now we're on to G1. Right? Yes. But that's it in a nutshell. Um, I, back to the zombie lunge, it's kind of just like that with Mr. X. You want to, basically, you run at them, and when you're, like, basically the like the height of a zombie, or a, the height of your character away from them, you double back. Then they're going to charge you twice, and you count one, two, three, four. Maybe a little faster than that, like one, two, three. Ah, okay. Well, yeah. I, I should do a video on that. But basically, you count to four seconds and then you run but you have to be kind of quick like right when they're finishing up the second grab is when you want to start running towards them because they will gain their composure quickly and um, be able to attack you again that's a tip for a uh, fourth survivor too to tofu and stuff all those things you're gonna have to bait some grabs so if anything Playing that would really help your hardcore game. It's pretty cool. So for this fight, you want to bring the combat knife from the break room. That's all you need. If you have the infinite combat knife, I recommend bringing that along with it. You're going to equip the the regular combat. I didn't bring any of them. So I'm going to go back and get those right now. I was like panicking for the moment when I saw I didn't have them because I thought I was stuck. And I forgot. I'm like, oh, I could just take the elevator. So here I grab both. I'm going to equip the one that can break first, the one from the break room. 
and attack. That way, in case I have to counterattack, I won't. But just in case, I'll use that one, the one that will break, instead of the unlimited one. You also want to bring your pistol and ammo. The shotgun, I think, I, I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. For this fight, you want to be long distance. Like, it's very easy to just kite him. If he ever hides, and it's like, where do you go? Run to the center of the room. Because what will happen is, and just to like run in a circle, and after a moment, he'll like jump from somewhere onto you, but like stumble. So you guys, it won't do any damage, but you'll be out in the open, and he'll be right next to you, and then you can just book it in any of the directions. And then like kite him and hide behind shit for cover and stuff. So right off the bat, I have a video for this. I do. So maybe you've seen the video, but it's the same strategy. I'm going to see how it goes during this play. But basically, right, you want to be very aggressive. You run up right off the bat and slash 13 times. Now I go for 13 instead of 14. Okay, so now you throw for a grenade and you basically do it again. Now you do it 13 more times. You can do 14, but I'd rather be careful, cautious, and not get grabbed or hurt, and not waste a flash. That's the thing, if you throw it and you're cocky or you're trying to get too many hits, it's not gonna hit him when he grabs you. It's he does It doesn't break him off you. So it's a waste, and then you're, you know, you have to use two when you, all you had to use was one, and potentially taking damage and stuff. So another 13 slashes. And watch, he'll go down. See, uh, tricks you, because I thought he was going to attack me, but I just want to be careful. I know he gets up quick. So now I switch to the pistol. I feel like I uh, have to kite him a lot, or not so much, but a decent amount. Then I just started trying to finish him off, because I know he's very weak, but it's very easy to kite him. I might even do, I think I actually do. I think I play it super safe, because I know how to take, I know how to go in the center. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I guess I haven't looked up boss fights or anything, like, to see what's out there. Okay, so he's dead. So, that's why I'm saying playing it safe. Get the 13 in three times as many as you can. And then just use pistols from a distance. I restock on the ammo also. Just because I'd rather have... I'd rather be collecting all the ammo on the way... Then, like, be short and having to, like... Because especially if I don't have room later. Like, say I run out of ammo and I don't pick this stuff up when I have room. And later I'm on the go and I only have a certain amount of space for, like, grenade round... Or shotgun shells and the shotgun and stuff. Then that's going to suck. So, that's why I get as much as I can now. Same with the herbs. It's better... For me... I think it's amazing to have green herbs on hand because if you find a red or a blue herb, they're just enhanced. And it sucks. And if you find a red herb, it's pretty much useless. And if without a green herb, using a red herb with a blue herb, that will give you uh, damage resistance, which is really cool. The reason I say that is because for tofu, this is a, like a complete like side point. For tofu, you get two red herbs, a green herb, and a blue herb. So for him, I recommend going a red and green, and then a red and blue. So what you do is you accumulate damage. Like, you try to dodge as much as you can for, like, the first half of the run. And then when you get to danger, finally, use your full heal. And then when shit gets hectic, pop the red and blue so you get the damage resistance. All right, so now back to here. I grab, I start, I... Deposit stuff. I know I'm going to get a full heal soon. I know I'm going to get a red herb and a blue herb in the kennel, in the morgue. I want to put the grenades away so I don't accidentally use them. But I also want to bring, I think, flashbangs with. Just, uh, or oh, okay, I bring a frag grenade for the break room. So this, when Leon comes up through the back. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, so I paused there because I had to really go to the bathroom. And then uh, I came back, and I didn't hit record, <laughs> basically. So all we did there was go to, to okay, we ran into Ada. We skipped the cinematic. We went to the jail. We ran to the end of the jail, which is where I just came out of. 
over there. And we got the crank. Now we're heading into the kennel, which is where I am now. I grabbed the blue herb over there. I grabbed the high quality gunpowder. I don't know if I'll have room for it, so I recommend ditching some more stuff because you're about to get to the break room anyway. So you can really travel light if you want to pick up all the stuff over here. Leon doesn't need the diamond key. And there's a tr I show you on my clear run how you can open it enough to where the zombie doesn't aggro. So you can grab the diamond key very easy. Because the zombie to the right, does not, uh, you can dodge if you're fast enough after grabbing the key. He comes to life. And if you're quick, you can just run out of here. So the second bed has a red herb. And then the last one has a flashbang. And this is where I think I just get... Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know why I closed it. Out of habit. Because, uh... I think I even... Okay, I didn't... I thought maybe I picked up the diamond key. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to close that at all. You can just run out. So, we use the crank that we just got from the jail here. This is like the generator room. We need to uh, grab this one piece. That's for the, uh, to open the jail cell to get the parking ticket or the parking permit or whatever. Here we flip switches, I believe, okay, two and three. That restores power. Right when power comes back, there's going to be dogs. So you want to hug this wall right here. You basically want to hug the walls. If you hug that, it dodges you. It, or you dodge it, I guess. If you hug this, no one gets you. That's a little creepy. Alright, if you hug this wall, you should be good. If you hug this wall to the right, you'll be good. You can get into this door. Alright. What I do is I run to the left. I think I get hit. A lot of times I don't. That's why I crossed over the wrong way. What I do is I go right. Then I swerve left. And he jumps to my right, and then I, I like, strafe it to the door. There's going to be more dogs. So if you're quick, you can get around this corner. Oh, yeah, see? That guy usually isn't there. It's because I got hit. But, yeah, you can dodge the one that comes around the corner and from in front of you. Keep going. Boop, boop, boop. We're about to make it to the break room. I don't save yet, so... Um... We're just going to stop in there to switch our stash around and stuff. From here, though, this is where you want to frag grenade because you're going to use it on, like, the three zombies down the hall. Then from here, we're going to go up, like, uh, where the flaming helicopter is. We're going to go up that way and open the uh, the gate that needs the crank that uh, basically leads to the chief's office. So it's kind of the alternate way... Claire gets, goes in through the chief's office. We go in through that opening. I throw it here so that way it kills the guy on the ground and the uh, the guy eating. And I think there's even one more. So later that gets rid of a lot of zombies. That's the whole reason. Because I've seen people use flashbangs, but if you use a frag grenade, it really makes it easy later. When, you're, uh, when you have to double back with uh, all the pieces and have to go back to the jail. So we use the crank here. Upstairs, we're going to get the next electronic piece. And, um... Man, I don't know. I wish I had a video for the solution so you could do it in the least amount of steps. I have... Oh, I have it right here. I uh, Maybe I can add... Okay, that's in the next video. Okay, so anyway, I open the lockers first. I grab the blue herb. The crank's useless, so I trash it. We need to get the gear. I'm slow walking so the zombie doesn't uh, hear me. Then I grab the shotguns and run. The shotgun shells and run. Grab the ammo from here. Another flashbang out of there. Go out the door. You could grab the blue herb on the table. I feel like the, uh, I I just feel like there's not enough room on hardcore because you also uh well I guess you're getting to the, hmm you could distort it 
If you, I don't even know if you have room though. But yeah, I think I mixed this with what it. Okay, yeah, I could have grabbed that blue herb. Anyway, here. Well, feel free to do whatever, however you feel comfortable with the herbs. Some people, I mean, don't even need it. Just take them as you go, whatever. Okay, over here you want to flip the handle. Once you do that, they're basically going to break through the door. So I run over here to lure them a little bit. Then I do like a wide circle around so I can sneak in. When I come back, the lady zombie is like programmed to break back in. So they're separated. So she's going to be in there. And he's going to be outside. Um, but I'm going to save before that even happens. So I hope you learned a lot. Uh, maybe you didn't. I don't know. I just uh, maybe like a different route or like seeing that there's a playthrough you could do without the magnum or I don't know any of those things. Uh, maybe seeing that when shit goes wrong, you can still make it, you know, and that's what's really cool about Leon. He has a lot of resources for the environment um, where Claire needs to like save them all. So stay tuned. And yeah, I hope you enjoy.